This is the ASICS Nova Blast 2. From the moment I started running in it earlier this year, I've been constantly reaching for it again and again. But how has this shoe held up over the last 100 miles? Time to lace them up one more time and take them for a run. Five point seven eight miles, eight minutes, forty three seconds per mile, one hundred and forty four beats per minute today, taking the ASICS Nova Blast two to the one hundred mile mark. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe and how it fared, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by ASICS for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe. And they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the ASICS Nova Blast. First, let's go over some specs. The Nova Blast 2 has 30 millimeters of FF blast midsole foam in the heel. And this year it has an eight millimeter drop, a little bit different from last year's 10 millimeter drop. But what it means is that there's 22 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot, a little bit more than there was last year. On the outsole, we have AHAR Plus, which is an iteration of their traditional AHAR rubber outsole formula. Up top, we have a double jacquard mesh, which is super soft. It almost feels like a knit material up here and then moving towards the midfoot cage. It gets to be a little bit less breathable, but again, there's a little bit more structure and control in this midfoot cage so you can get some lockdown on the laces. A lightly padded tongue and then a moderate amount of padding, almost kind of a heavy amount of padding for a daily trainer, but overall a very comfortable amount of foam back here. And that foam is covering a very structured and a very rigid and substantial heel cup. Something that's pretty common, almost a signature feature of a lot of ASICS shoes is that structure in that heel cup that's back here. All told, this shoe comes in, I think, uh, somewhere in the high nine ounces. I don't have an exact figure from ASICS for some reason, uh, but from the other sources that I've been looking at, people will report this shoe between anywhere between 9.7 to 9.9 .9 ounces for a US men's size nine. Again, I'm not sure why there's so much variation out there in the weights either, but those are just some of the numbers that you'll find out there on the internet. And to me, 9.9 .9 ounces seems a little bit high. 9.7 ounces is probably closer to where I would have guessed for this shoe. So with those specs out of the way, let's talk about what the shoe was like to run in and how that shoe has changed and how the shoes held up over time. First, let's talk about the ride. The FF Blast midsole foam is what this shoe is all about. It is a super squishy foam, but also kind of squishes fast and comes back fast as well. So you're getting a lot of impact absorption, but you're also not getting stuck in there. It's not like muddy or gunky, it squishes down and then it comes back up really quickly and in a pleasant way that makes running feel nice and snappy. Last weekend, I was in Baltimore with the Believe in the Run crew, helping them to celebrate their grand opening of their office space. I brought one pair of shoes with me. It was this pair of shoes, and I ended up putting 30 miles in the shoe over the course of that weekend, running all road miles all over Baltimore, and the shoe did a fantastic job. I was a little bit tired by the end of the weekend, but as far as my feet and my joints were concerned, I was feeling great. So that FF Blast midsole foam is something that I definitely have been loving throughout the time that I've been running in this shoe, but especially in the last couple of weeks as I've been putting a little bit more mileage, focusing a little bit more on this shoe. But it's also an extremely versatile shoe as well. So I can use it for everything from just general getting out there and having fun running like I did over the last weekend, but I can also use it in the way that I used it today, which was the day after a really tough and long track workout. Today was more of a recovery run for me. So even though, again, I was on hard surfaces, I was on pavement, cement, concrete, uh, I still felt fantastic in the shoe and I felt like it was really giving me what my feet and joints needed, which was a lot of impact absorption, while I was still able to get out there, turn the legs over, get some active recovery in. So 
Both of those situations, the shoe did really well. The shoe also does surprisingly well at going a little bit faster. So a lot of my easy runs, I might throw in some strides in the run, a little bit towards the end of it. And this shoe, while it's not like a speed shoe, it definitely is able to pick up the pace and it feels good to run strides in this shoe. I don't know that I'd wanna do much more than that, maybe like a light Bartlett type of workout where you're doing a little bit of speed play, maybe a couple minutes on, a minute off, that kind of thing. Maybe in that situation, I would still want to use this shoe, but if it's much more intense than that, that's where I might go to a speed shoe or maybe a carbon plated shoe. But for a vast majority of my running, the A6 Nova Blast 2 is a really easy choice in most of the situations. And not only do I think it's gonna be in my list of some of the top five best daily trainers of the year, I think by the end of the year, it's probably gonna be in my top five for best shoes of the year overall, because I've just been really enjoying this shoe so much. Comparing it to last year's version, I feel like there were some subtle updates that they made to it. They changed the heel drop, and I think they also changed some of the sculpting on the midsole of the shoe, which surprisingly to me, it doesn't seem like changing the way that this outsole is sculpted. It looks very decorative to me, but it does seem to make a difference. So I feel like a lot of the excess squishiness that people complained about last year has been resolved, and you have a slightly more stable ride while still maintaining that Nova Blast squishiness that I fell in love with last year. So they took something that I thought was great last year and made it even better. But let's talk about that midsole foam over the last 100 miles. I will say that I have an interesting comparison point to make, which is something that I usually don't have the opportunity to do. While I was in Baltimore, ASICS was one of the sponsors for that event over the weekend, and they were able to hook me up with a brand new pair of ASICS Nova Blast 2s in black, which is my favorite color for running shoes. So I was able to directly compare having gone for a run early in the morning in these older Nova Blast 2s, and then later in the morning when I got to the event, running in the black brand new ones right out of the box. And I felt like the brand new ones were a little bit firmer than the pair that I had just finished going for a long run in. And so there's a little bit of a difference. I'm not gonna say that it's breaking, but I think that's just the way the foam is a little bit changing over time. It's still a very comfortable shoe right out of the box, very squishy, very enjoyable, but it got a little bit squishier to me over the last 100 miles. And not in a way that I felt was unstable. I just feel like it changed into a much more comfortable shoe. So I definitely appreciated the change and like the change. I like my 100 mile Nova Blast 2 better than my brand new right out of the box Nova Blast 2. But I don't think that this shoe is going to degrade very quickly at all. I still think that this foam, the FF Blast, is a pretty resilient foam, so it's gonna last for quite a bit of time. And I feel like there's certainly much more life left in this shoe. Now, another key portion of wear that people take a look at is what's going on in the outsole. And I think that outsole is holding up really well. For an A6 shoe, this is not a lot of rubber on the outsole at all. Although I do think that the Nova Blast 2 did gain some rubber on the outsole compared to version one. And I think that they probably could have done without the extra rubber that seems to be on here because this AHAR Plus really seems to last for a long time, at least for the way that I run and on the surfaces that I run. The worst of the wear for me is on this right kind of side towards like the front of the heel right here. I am seeing a little bit of wear. I think that the clever way that this outsole is designed, there's a very sharp kind of like bevel to the outside of the rubber. And instead of it looking like the like treads or lugs are wearing down, it just seems like the angle of that bevel seems to be becoming a little bit less pronounced over time and I'm seeing it quite a bit over in my usual kind of high wear area. In other spots, it's hard to really tell how many miles are on the shoe. I think part of it is because of the design of this specific color that I have. Another spot that I'm seeing somewhere is in another expected area, right here in this center portion. You can see there's some discoloration of the foam and that's where the rubber outsole is kind of wearing in, almost getting kind of pushed into the foam. And instead of landing just on this strip of rubber, I'm landing on the rubber and a little bit of that midsole foam material. But while there's a little bit of scuffing that's happening, it just kind of looks like it's a little bit dirty. Uh, there, the whole foam itself is holding up well and the rubber is still holding up well. For example, there's an ASICS logo kind of etched into the rubber and still very well defined and it's easy to spot on uh, 
on the outsole. Similar for the left foot, seeing very similar wear patterns in very similar spots, although it's a lot less pronounced. And when I do look at kind of the this high wear area on the outer part of the heel, the angle of that bevel is a little bit sharper than it is on the right because just the different way that my two feet happen to hit the ground. So this Ahar rubber is doing really well as I expected after what I saw last year in the Nova Blast 1. As far as the upper is concerned, the upper has been treating me really well. I do really like this double jacquard mesh. It still kind of has that kind of like close up of a strawberry look, which sometimes when I look at it in kind of like the wrong way is a little bit off putting to me. It gives me a little bit of a gut reaction to it, but the material itself is very comfortable. The toe box has a lot of room, a lot of space for me up here. So when I do want to take the shoe on a recovery run, it's nice and forgiving. The shoe tends to be a little long. It was a little bit long last year too. And I think one of the things that happens is there's a little bit of weird puckering that happens up here. This is something that happened pretty much right away, right out of the box, but something that I was hoping kind of would mellow itself out over time as this mesh stretched a little bit, but it's still kind of there, kind of weird looking, but you know, it's a very minor thing. And most of the time I don't even notice that it's there. Uh, as far as everywhere else, there's no wear or any other signs of degradation on the upper at all. It's been comfortable for me the entire time. It is a touch on the warm side, and that's, I think, because of a lot of this padding that's in here. It ends up being just a bit of a sweat sponge when you have this kind of padding in the back and around, all around the heel cup and on the portions where if there's sweat dripping down your leg, this is the part that's touching your ankle. Uh, and so sweat tends to collect in there a little bit. These shoes aren't the most fragrant right now. So it is holding on to a little bit of sweat moisture a little bit longer than I would like. But overall, it's been a pretty good shoe for me in terms of temperature and heat regulation and breathability. And in terms of wear, it's fantastic. And it doesn't look like a 100 mile shoe at all, except for just a slight amount of fading and kind of like staining along the upper, which is to be expected for a shoe that I've run in for 100 miles. Overall, I think the shoe is holding up fantastically well. I think it's getting better with the miles, better with age. So I'm extremely happy with this Nova Blast 2. I think it's fantastic shoe, a fantastic value for what you're getting and how long it seems to be holding up for me. So i am absolutely been loving the Nova Blast 2. It is one of my favorite shoes of the year and it was very easy for me to get to the 100 mile mark. So those are my thoughts on the Nova Blast 2 after 100 miles. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. I'd love to talk to you about it there or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. And I'd love to be able to answer any questions you have in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, what's going on?